So I understand from the mainstream media that we have some very good news, really, to talk about from the United States today for our, our main story there. So NBC News this week, murder and other violent crimes dropped across USA last year, FBI data shows. And just on this subject from across the summer, ABC News, US stats show violent crime dramatically falling. Uh, and then they say, so why is there a rising clash with perception? Another NBC News headline from earlier in the summer, FBI stats show historic decline in violent crime rate with murder showing sharpest drop. So, Andrew, I believe you wanted to talk about this story. Are you going to tell us about what a wonderful, peaceful place the United States now is? Well, definitely not our big cities. Like I said, that rising clash and perception you're talking about is going to be a huge issue this election cycle. Opinion polls routinely show that immigration and inflation are the top two issues Americans are concerned about. But rising crime is not far beyond that. Biden's let 10 million illegal immigrants into the nation. Venezuelan gangs are coming into Aurora, Colorado, the south side of Chicago, New York City, starting turf wars with the normal gangs uh, that have been here for years. And um, people are really concerned about the crime. Now, uh, the media, which traditionally aligns with the Democratic Party and wants to make it look like Biden and Harris is doing a good job, have really been trumpeting for weeks now that violent crime is coming down. Uh, even in the presidential debate, Donald Trump said it was going up and the uh, uh, Harris didn't even have to disagree with him because the, the ABC fact checkers jumped in and said that it's like, no, actually, the statistics show that crime is going down. Uh, the FBI finally released its initial it's a report this week and said that violent crime has gone down three percent since last year so we're in a really interesting situation where actually the justice department measures violent crime in two ways and the two ways it measures violent crime are at dramatic opposites with each other right now so trump and the republicans are talking about one measuring statistic and the democrats and the mainstream media are talking about the other. But the two ways is the FBI report is they report on crime reported by police officers. And so when the FBI tells you that violent crime is going down, they're saying the police reported 3% less violent crimes this year than last year. The second way that the same Justice Department, the FBI is part of the Justice Department, that the same Justice Department reports crime is a, a victimization survey, where instead of relying on their police reports, they actually use surveying of the actual people in the United States to say, like, have you been the victim of any violent crimes in the past 12 months? And then extrapolate that data. That victimization survey says that violent crime is up 55% since Biden took office. So half over, like, is, is however many crimes took place the last year of Donald Trump's year, take half of that and add that on top. Half over again is many. Uh, so that's a pretty big discrepancy. It's the same Justice Department, that they're, the survey they take vic asking the people, have you been subject to a violent crime, says up 55%. The survey they actually ask the police said, well, it's about down about 3%. And so there's actually a really easy way to reconcile that. And the Wall Street Journal, which is a pretty mainstream newspaper, honestly uh, did some reporting on this. As they said, said, well, they said since the um, they have something in American law enforcement, we're now calling the Ferguson effect. Uh, there was a bad race riot in Ferguson a few years ago where the uh, it was a white police officer uh, hurt a black criminal. And the media backlash against the police was so bad that the police didn't want anything like that to happen again. So they just pulled back from some of these neighborhoods. And you're seeing that, and, and that, got, that trend got worse after the George Floyd protest. And it's getting worse, like as you get these Venezuelan gangs move into New York, as they move into Chicago, there, there are parts of the south side of Chicago where like the police, they don't even want to go there anymore. I think in Europe, they call them no-go no -go zones and they're more about Islamists. But there's, there's with the gangs, there's that trend here. So it makes sense that if like, the the crime's getting bad enough that the police don't go into that neighborhood, then 
when the justice department surveys you and be like, how is the violent crime in your neighborhood? You're like worse than ever. It's like, I've been subject to like three assaults this year. But then if they ask the local police department in that neighborhood, they're like, well, how many, how many arrests have you made for violent crimes? They're like, oh, like not very many. We don't even go there anymore. It's such a powerful example of how the media lies while giving the letter of the truth. I just spent a couple of minutes before this show gathering headlines. I just went to Google and was you know, typed in something about like US crime rate news or whatever. And I didn't search very hard to find those headlines. That was just the first one that came up. I didn't see a single headline that gave the context that you just told us. Nothing about that in any of those articles. And again, I just skimmed to, to kind of have an introduction rather than to research this subject deeply. But most people, like if you're just rough, generally keeping an eye on the news, you're never going to see any of that. And I th so, you know, that's important. But also this rising crime rate, I mean, this is, this is a curse. This is a result of our own behavior. This is a sign that we're doing something, that America is doing something badly wrong as a nation, that things are moving in a wrong direction. And it's a, a problem that was prophesied. Yeah, because there's, well, there's two main results of our own behavior. There's, because if you look at the south side of Chicago, there was actually a former uh, gang member there who did an interview with the media this week where he was talking about, he said, there's these black gangs that have like run this south side of Chicago for decades. And he said, the crime rate's about to get a lot worse because now you've got these Venezuelan gangs who have recently entered the country. And so you've, you're, you're basically on a, a race war in Chicago, on the verge of a race war between Blacks and Hispanics as they both try to take over the, these crime networks. Now, these Black gangs, that's not new, and they're not all Black, but they're predominantly Black in that part of Chicago, have been there for years. And uh, the sociologists at like the Heritage Foundation and other places say that they, they pretty much can predict the crime in a neighborhood within about a 10% margin of error by plugging fatherlessness into an equation. They said, it's like, since if the fatherlessness is this much, then we, they've got an equation that adjusts for some several factors. But they said, we can, we can give you a pretty rough estimate of what the crime's going to be like without knowing anything else. And so a lot of this is just due to like decades of family breakdown in America. Uh, and the, for a myriad of reasons, the family breakdown in Chicago has been worse amongst the black community than the white community. And so that's the main reason, like the family breakdown is the root cause of that gang violence you're seeing in Chicago and other cities. But now there's a new wrinkle been introduced to it where Biden's let all these immigrants coming in from other nations. Uh, and so now you've got like gangs that have traditionally been operating in Venezuela who they've just led into the country and now they want to control the crime networks in Chicago. And so, but they, to do that, they've got to beat out the gangs that have already been there for years. Uh, and so you're, you're getting like almost like drug cartel warfare in Mexico as, um, as they fight this out. And it doesn't make sense that in a neighborhood like that, that like, oh, crime's going down. You're like, you, you, crime never goes down when you introduce a brand new gang from a foreign country. You have to fight a turf war. Uh, and so these are curses prophesied in the Bible. I think uh, one scripture um, that we, we use oftentimes in dealing with this is actually in Isaiah 1 verse 7. And the lead up to that is uh, God lamenting over end time Israel turning away from him, where he says that like, well, an ox knows its owner and a donkey knows its owner, but, uh, but Israel doesn't look at me as a father anymore. And so this is in, particular in the concept of Israel no longer looking at God as their father, but that he's bringing a family element into it here that shows that by the time you get to verse seven, it says, uh, your cities are burned with fire. Uh, devoured by strangers. Um, and actually a lot of the more, that's from the King James Version, some of the more modern translations even update the language stranger to aliens. And so this is about riots and burning and crime, uh, specifically in America's cities being perpetrated mostly by aliens. And for, for years, that a lot of the crime there has been amongst well, racial minorities, predominantly people who aren't necessarily ethnic Israelites, uh, but, but still American citizens. But now more recently, you're actually getting like aliens, aliens in the fact that they're not just not descended from ancient Israel, 
but aliens and the fact that they're, they're like, actually we're in Venezuela 12 months ago and are now coming in and burning down. It's, I really expect, a, well, we're expecting Donald Trump to come back this election, but it's like, even if he comes back, I think uh, Chicago is going to be, <laughs> Chicago is going to be in a bad spot because it's like, whether you try to deport these people, deport these uh, Venezuelan immigrants or whatnot, it's going to be a big fight to try to get them as these turf wars. And you see that in Mexico, that like when the Sinaloa cartel and the Gulf cartel go at each other for a certain market, it gets really bloody for a while. So what we're seeing is a, is a direct result of efforts to bring America down, both that effort to bring America down and all of these, the results, all of these curses. Those are both prophesied. And those are all something that you can read about in our free book, America Under Attack. 